Hello, you're watching Encore, our daily arts and culture roundup. Coming up on today's show. An eclectic selection of pocket-sized pictures in Clermont-Ferrand as the French city hosts its international festival of short films. And people from different religions, different cultures, are going to have to learn to live with each other. Ai Weiwei follows the flux of planetary migrations as the Chinese artist turns his gaze to the millions of exiled people around the world in a new documentary, Human Flow. And we check out the French rock pop outfit who are heading to the top of the charts. Therapy Taxi are hoping for a hit sale with their new album. We're starting with cinema at an international event that proves small is beautiful. Our reporters have been checking out the scaled-down offerings at the short film festival in Clermont-Ferrand here in France. The selection takes in One Man's Battle with Beatles, a celebration of the civil rights movement in the US, and the odd tale of a couple of sound engineers in Thailand. Thomas Waterhouse and Renaud Lefort give us the inside track and take a look back at the festival's history. For something short and sweet, Clermont-Ferrand is the place to be. At the 40th edition of the city's international short film festival, 150 movies are in the running. 160,000 visitors from across the globe have come to see what's on offer. The festival was first started by a group of young film fans in 1979. We'd seen some short films at another festival on experimental cinema and at a festival in Trouville, which showed both features and shorts. They had some great movies, so we said let's show them a week-long short film event back in Clermont. You can catch a quick nap between screenings, and every attendee gets the same level of access, which means anyone can just stand up and declare their admiration for the filmmakers. That emotion you captured was universal. Many cinematographers have traveled miles to showcase their work, like this young American director raised in Kuwait. Her film is called One Small Step. In an L.A. suburb, nine-year-old Dasani struggles to balance family responsibilities with her dream of becoming an astronaut, a story that mirrors the director's own life. I grew up in Kuwait, uh, so I was like, I have to go to America. I want to go to college. This is my dream. I want to follow my dream. But, like, I had my responsibilities of my family. At that point, it felt like... I had to choose one or the other. So that decision that Dasani, my char the character, makes in the end of the film is similar. She either like goes to her field trip or chases after her sister. And whatever decision she makes at that, that point defined the rest of her life. What about when you go to the moon? I'm going to be sick to my stomach when that day comes. But you're still going to go, ain't you? Yeah. Antonin Perejadko is a French director. After the 14th of July girl and the law of the jungle, he's back with panic at the Senate. After hasty elections, the new Senate president is an environmentalist who wants to upset traditional French garden design by letting nature run wild. Le Sénat, en plus, a un côté pour moi extrêmement burlesque. For me, the Senate has this farcical element to it. The upper chamber of parliament is predominantly made up of old men. I thought that seemed pretty right for some silly jokes, which try to dust the cobwebs off a very old school institution. In a similar way, the notion of French gardens and this idea of controlling nature is also a bit ridiculous for me. If green-fingered comedy isn't quite your cup of tea, fear not. There's something for all tastes, with the theme of gastronomy featuring prominently this year. But the short film festival does come with a warning. Blink, and you'll miss it. Next, Ai Weiwei is best known for his sculpture, photography, and politically charged installations. But now the Chinese artist has turned his hand to documentary cinema. 
His film, Human Flow, takes a look at the forced displacement of millions of people around the world. The project started when he took out his phone to document refugees on the Greek island of Lesbos. Anka Ula tells us more about the film, which is now on release here in France. A modern Renaissance man, Ai Weiwei, is a sculptor, performer, photographer and director. The Chinese dissident artist's latest project is Human Flow, a documentary film that depicts the saga of the displaced around the world. 65 million migrants and refugees uprooted by politics, economics, climate. It's the story of one year, 23 countries, 600 people and one shared fate. It is the most pervasive kind of cruelty that can be exercised against a human being. You are forcibly robbing this human being of all aspects that would make human life not just tolerable but meaningful in many ways. Film as a mirror. We all have to look through it to see how we feel about the situation, who we are. It's not asking for mercy, but asking for responsibility. But this film is not just about tragedy. It's also about resilience, laughter, humanity. What's my new name? Oh, Al Mahmoud. 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 Yes. Abdullah Ma Mahmoud. I'll give you my name. My man name is uh, Ai Weiwei. So Ai next Weiwei. time you are. Yeah. You're Ai Weiwei, I'm uh... Al Mahmoud. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to take my tent, it's. <laughs> Thank you. In 2016, more than 4 million refugees had been in exile at least 20 years their lives interrupted and an entire generation lost. We're moving to the art world now for a story of buried treasure. A canvas known as the African Mona Lisa has been found in a flat in London. Ben Nwanwu's 1974 painting had been missing for more than four decades and it had taken on an almost mythical status in the painter's native Nigeria since the three original versions of it had all been lost up until now. The portrait depicts Adetutu Ademi Luyi, better known as Tutu. She was the daughter of a Yoruba king. He was so struck by her beauty, he stopped and asked her whether he could paint her portrait, uh, not realising her social status. She was an Ife princess, uh, so she was a, a Yoruba, and the artist, Ben Mumu, was Igbo. So they were of different ethnic groups. So the fact that the two of them developed this per close personal connection over the course of this painting was a symbol of national reconciliation. We thought, oh, you know, there's no way Tutu's going to be sitting in North London. And uh, we arrive and they show us the painting and it's, it's Tutu, it's the original oil. Um, it was really an extraordinary moment. And the painting will be sold at auction at Bonhams in London at the end of the month. To music next, and we're checking in with an up-and-coming French band that are so precocious they've been called baby punks. Therapy Taxi have already charmed fans on the festival circuit and at a few choice gigs, and their debut album Hit Sale has been tipped for success. Mario Sophos takes a look. To get yourself noticed, sometimes you've got to ruffle some feathers. Don't let Tabby Taxi disarm you with a catchy chorus. Their lyrics are often expletive-filled affairs where manners are thrown out of the window. And it's certainly worked for this Paris-based act who are signed to a label and have just released their debut album. Their provocative wordsmith is Raph. When he met Adir five years ago, it was an artistic love at first sight for the duo, which then became a trio with the addition of drummer Renault. <laughs> And as for the band's candid lyrics and gutsy attitude... In fact, I think we're part of a disillusioned generation. But making music is not at all about disenchantment, and so there's an irony there. La Rochelle is the home of the Francofolie Music Festival, where Taxi Therapy appeared last year as newcomers. That's the stage over there, a really big stage, and this is the backstage area. They're now using the festival's equipment to prepare for their upcoming tour. 
The band are rehearsing in this residential studio. Okay, so chorus, but no synth, then a verse, then chorus with the synth, and we'll see what that sounds like. It's a week of total immersion into their music, of course with some laughs, the occasional disagreement, and a few naps in between. All for the sake of getting each song to sound just right. We did this mainly for the sound and to make sure our songs sound tight. In terms of playing live, we're just practicing, getting to the right level, everything really. There are no secrets, you have to do to get better. Taxi Therapy's tour kicks off in mid-March. And finally, we're looking ahead at what's to come in the world of fashion, more specifically at the very well-dressed gentleman showcasing Tom Ford's autumn winter collection in New York. The designer best known for injecting a significant dose of sex appeal into previous menswear collections presented a slick selection of urban looks in reflective fabrics as well as his new line of underwear. Guests were even treated to a pre-show cocktail courtesy of the models themselves. We'll leave you with some of the highlights. Do remember to check out our website for more arts and culture news and you can keep up with Encore on social media too. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. I want a lot of money, living where it's sunny. Try to get me a nice playboy bunny. Don't worry about the haters, I tell them see you later. Cause I don't want to rise like